Welcome to the battle of the Google Assistant Smart Displays. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. If you own a Google Home or a Google Assistant supported device, make sure you hit subscribe below as I'm all about helping you learn how to use these products better. So today we're gonna dive deep and check out all the reasons why you would want to maybe buy one of these products or another. So here I have the three available Google Assistant Smart Display. So over here, I have the Lenovo Smart Display. This was the first one to come out. This is a 10 inch screen. It also comes in an eight inch variant. Here I have the Google Home Hub, which is a seven inch screen. And then over here I have the JBL Link View, which is an eight inch screen. So first I wanna ask three different questions to think about while we are going through this video to help determine which one you want. So the first one is where are you going to put this device? That's very important to know what kind of size that you want. Second is what kind of media are you going to be using it for? Are you gonna be using it just to control your Google Assistant or to control your smart home, maybe to play some music or to do video calling? So think about that. And then the last one is how much do you wanna spend? That might be the ultimate deciding factor. Um, there's gonna be all kinds of deals coming on in the next few weeks. So think about those three things while we go through this. So first off, let's talk about the specs. So starting with the Lenovo Smart Display, we have the 10 inch, which retails for $249. It has a five megapixel up here at the top. The screen resolution is 1920 by 1200. And then over here on the side, you have the speakers, which is a two inch, 10 watt full range speaker with two times passive tweeters. It does have Bluetooth 4.2 and it connects to 802.11 AC wireless networks. Now the only difference between this and the eight inch model is the eight inch model is $199 and the screen resolution is 1280 by 800 and the speakers just aren't quite as big. Moving on to the JBL Link View. So this costs $249 and has an eight inch screen with a resolution of 1280 by 800. Up at the top, it does have the five megapixel camera. And then for the speakers, you do have two times two inch full range driver with stereo speakers. It does have Bluetooth 4.2 and it connects to wireless networks at 802.11ac. And then here in the middle, we do have the Google Home Hub. It's seven inches, it costs $149. The screen resolution is 1024 by 600, and it does not have a camera at all on this device. It does have a full range speaker for crystal clear sound. It does have Bluetooth 5.0, and it connects to wireless networks 802.11 AC. So the speaker on the Google Home Hub is just a bit better than the Google Home Mini if you do have one of those. So those are all the specs for those that really want to know what is inside these. Now let's talk about the experience that you're gonna have between all of them. Now the first thing I want to talk about is the software and feature differences between these devices. So the Google Home Hub, when it came out, it had the latest software version, which allowed you to pull down and go into the home view so you can quickly control your smart home and it also supported multi-room audio right from the get-go. Then over here on the Lenovo Smart Display and the JBL, they did not get that software update till a few weeks after the Home Hub had come out. And now you can pull down and you can quickly change your home view settings. You can also go in and set them up as a multi-room audio. So now you can connect all of these at once. And then it also added the ability to have your Nest Hello doorbell that when it rings, it will automatically pop up on all of these at the same time. And you can see who is there at the door. You can click the responses and then it will send it to the Nest Hello. So now they are all pretty much on the same software build. That being said, there are a few unique features that the Google Home Hub has that these do not have. One of them right now is being able to do the bass and treble settings. So in the Google Home app, you can actually go in and adjust that for the Google Home Hub. The Google Home Hub also has another setting that allows you to change a few more things about the display. So in these settings, you can choose when it turns on the clock at night where it's dim or dark. Here you can set the minimum brightness of the screen, which is dark, dim, bright, and brighter. Here you can choose what it will show in low light. You can show the clock or turn off the screen. Here you can set it where the screen will automatically turn off after five minutes of inactivity. You can also adjust the ambient EQ. So it will um, get brighter or lower depending on where you have this. I had this under a cabinet and I went in and put this a little bit brighter so that it was always 
um, a little bit easier to see. And then you have this color matching feature, which will change depending on the lighting in the room. So if you have certain types of lights during the day and at night, it can adjust depending on those lights. So it really looks just like a picture frame. The Google Home Hub does also have the ability to pair to another Bluetooth speaker. So if I have another speaker sitting here, I can go into the settings and then pair that so that anytime I play music from the Google Home Hub, it would play out of that speaker. These two already have big speakers and they don't have that ability. So other than that, pretty much everything about these are very similar in everything that they can do. If you wanna see full video all about the things that you can do with a smart display, I made one specifically for the Google Home, but that applies to these other devices as well. So I'll leave a link to that at the end of this video. Now, along with the software, let's talk about the speed of the devices. So I did notice that the Google Home Hub was probably the snappiest of all of these. Um, there was no real lag or any problems like that, but just overall using it, this one tended to open up little things a little bit faster. Next, let's move on to the size of the devices. So I have been using the Lenovo Smart Display the longest and I had it in my kitchen. I really liked it because of the 10 inch screen. If I wanted to watch any types of videos, I could see it from far away if I was cooking or doing the dishes or whatever. I then put the Google Home Hub there and it just wasn't quite enough screen. So if you are using this in a little bit bigger room, I definitely would recommend having the 10 inch Lenovo Smart Display. Then next I put the JBL Link View there and I really liked it because it's a room that we use music in a lot. So definitely we liked it because of that. But then I did notice that the JBL Link View, even though it's splash resistant here on the front from water, there's some kind of coating that makes it a little bit more reflective. So during the day, it was a little harder to see than the other devices here but I liked having the eight inch screen. It was a good kind of mid range. If you don't want something so big, the link view will do the job. Now let's move out of the kitchen and into maybe your family room or your entertainment room. So if you're listening to a lot of music, the JBL link view would be a, a great fit. But if you wanna still consume a lot of media, maybe you don't have a TV in a certain room, uh, the Lenovo smart display would be perfect for that. Now let's move into the bedroom and see what it looks like in there. So here, of course, with the Google Home Hub being the smallest, it fits the best on the nightstand. Moving to the JBL Link View, it was a little too big, especially with those massive speakers. And then here with the Lenovo Smart Display, definitely too big. I don't really need a big screen like that right there. But let's say you're at a college dorm and you just want one little screen to consume your media. You could put this maybe on an office table. The Lenovo Smart Display again would be a perfect device in that scenario. Now let's say you have one of these in your main bedroom and at night you want to make sure that the device goes the dimmest possible so that it isn't blaring at you in the middle of the night. So let's check out the ambient settings right now. So when I turn off the lights in this room, you can see how quickly the Google Home Hub is able to dim, followed by the JBL Link View, and then the smart display is a little bit slower. Sometimes the screen will actually stay on for a few minutes before it completely turns off. And even when it's off, you can still see a little bit of the light in the backlight of the screen. Now with the Home Hub, this is definitely my recommendation if you're going to be putting this in the bedroom because it is able to get so dim. And then as soon as it's dim, it turns off the pictures and puts on a nice big clock. And I don't even know if you can see it in this video, but it's still there. I can see the time, but it's just the right brightness so it wouldn't be blaring at me at all. And uh, compared to the other ones where it still showed the clock and it may be a little too bright in pitch black. So if you're looking for something that does an excellent job at dimming, the Google Home Hub is the way to go. Now let's talk about the screen resolution on these devices when they're first announced. I wanted to make sure that I had an HD display so that if I was watching movies or anything, it looked very crisp. And then when the Home Hub was announced at 1024 by 600, I didn't think the display was gonna be that great but it is probably the best quality display that I've seen on a device like this. Um, the brightness and the colors can go in to extreme lows and highs, and just overall, it's very crisp and clear. Now, if you move up to the 10 inch display, it has the highest resolution and videos on it look very, very nice. So here I'm gonna play a little bit of The Secret Life of Pets, and you can see the difference here between the sizes as well as what the video resolution looks like. So let's start with the Google Home Hub. 
Here you can see on this small display, it still looks very bright and vibrant. Now I am using the auto brightness setting in all of these examples so that you can tell what it looks like just in a natural setting without me over brightening the actual display. Moving on to the link view, it of course is a little bit bigger at eight inches and the quality is really crisp and clear. Now here you don't notice that glare at all, but uh, it looks really sharp. So if you don't have a bunch of windows in your room, um, wherever you have this, I think the JBL Link View does have a really good display. Now I do think that watching a video on this is really amazing because it has the addition of the better audio quality. Now here on the smart display, of course the biggest display, everything looks very crisp and clear. I'm very impressed with how this looks and with how this sounds. Now let's move on to the audio quality of these smart displays. So first off, the Google Home Mini is the smallest one and has the smallest sound. So the speakers are right here up at the front. They're just firing out kind of like the Google Home Mini fires up. These kind of fire out that way. I was hoping this would have a little more bass, kind of like the regular Google Home, but it doesn't. It does have really good sound, really crystal clear, but it might leave you longing for a little bit more. That's where you would get the JBL Link View. This has the best sound in any of these. Very good basses. Now that these all have the multi-room audio support, let's check out how they sound and do a quick audio comparison between the different devices. Sure, playing your Google Play Music playlist called Office Party on Home Hub Group. If you are looking for a smart display that just has the best sound, the JBL Link View is certainly the way to go. Now let's talk about making phone calls and video calls with these devices. So if you live in the US, Canada, or I think the UK, you can make actual phone calls from these devices. You can link your phone number, so it shows that you are actually calling somebody. Um, you would just need to say the number. So that works great. But then you have the ability to use Google Duo. So Google Duo is an app that you can get on your phone where you can video chat any other person that has an Android or an iPhone. You just need to link your phone number and then that's how you can video chat together. So all of these do support that, but with the Google Home Hub, there is no camera. So if you video call somebody on this, they cannot see you, but you can see them from their phone. You need to make sure they turn it sideways so you can actually see them in the full screen. But they'll be a little confused as to why they can't see you. That's one of the downsides of the Google Home Hub, no camera. Next, the both the Link View and the Smart Display do have five megapixel cameras on the front here. Now you can mute those or turn off the camera if you don't wanna see it anymore. So they do have these privacy switches and you'll see like a red light up here at the top or over here on the side showing that the camera is muted. If I answer with the JBL Link View, let's check out the quality here. So it looks really good um, from the other end. And then here looking at what the JBL Link View shows, on the phone side, it looks really crisp and clear. I'm really impressed with what it can do. Now, if you want to be seen better, you just need to walk up a little closer to this wherever it's sitting. Now looking at the camera from the Lenovo Smart Display, again, it looks really good from what the phone is sending to the Smart Display. 
And then here, let's check out what the smart display is sending to the phone. Now I did notice that maybe the link view was a little bit crisper than this, but for the most part, it doesn't really matter because they both look great and they do have that function. Now, if you don't want to use the cameras at all, you do have the option to just do a Google Duo voice call. And overall, I'm extremely impressed by the clarity of this voice call. It's using pretty much voice over IP. So it's using the internet to make a voice call and it sounded very clear in my testing of this, better than the regular phone calling capability. So if that's something you're going to be using a lot, calling grandma and grandpa or whatever, I would definitely recommend getting one of the smart displays or the link view to do that. Now, one of the reasons I wanted a smart display in the beginning is the ability to quickly control my smart home devices. So with the home view, I can swipe down, easily turn on and off the lights in a certain room. So if I wanna turn off these lights, I can just press one button and it automatically turns off all the lights in the room. I can then press the button again it turns those right back on very easy. So depending on what room you have this in, you link it to that room and you can do that. So if you wanna be able to do that in all the rooms very easily, you can um, get one of these for each room. But this has the ability to control all the different rooms. So I just swipe down, I select the lights button right here, and now it pulls up all the rooms that I have in my house. If I wanna turn off all the lights at once, I would just select this top one, and then you can click off and it turns off every smart light that you have in your house. So all of these have the ability to do that. There is no difference between one or the other. They have the ability to change your lights, cast media, broadcast, change your thermostat, as well as view your smart cameras. Now the home view is available on all of these devices. So if you want to be able to control your smart home, any one of these will work. Maybe if you just wanna put a few of these in a bunch of different rooms, going with the cheaper option might be the best so that you're not spending a bunch of money that you're not using the full capabilities of that device. Now, of course, I haven't activated the Google Assistant much in this video, but these do all have the full Google Assistant like you would have on the Google Home or the Google Home Mini. One thing that they don't have is continued conversations. So just because of the smart display or whatever it is, it cannot continually listen to what you are saying. So maybe that will come in an update. I haven't heard anything, but that's one thing that these won't have compared to a regular Google Home. These can also cast. Um, so not only can you play videos on here, but they can cast. You can play videos from YouTube, YouTube TV, Google Play Movies. You can also cast from your phone, from Hulu or um, many of the other cast supported devices. So in conclusion, I think any of these are going to be a really great purchase. I haven't had any problems with any of them at all, but just depending on what you need. So if you need something small and compact and works really great with ambient for your bedroom, the Google Home Hub is a great way to go. If you're looking for something that has the best sound, definitely go with the JBL Link. And if you just wanna watch a lot of videos and consume a lot of content and make video calls, definitely go with the Lenovo Smart Display. So there you go, that is pretty much all my thoughts that I have about the comparison between these different devices. If you have any further questions about these, let me know in the comments below. And if this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe and then make sure you check out my video all about what you can do with the Google Home Hub over there on the side. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.